Hi everyone, today we are going to be starting off with preemptive uh, shortest job first CPU scheduling and like I said it is the harder part I mean the second hardest of all the CPU scheduling algorithms among the five CPU scheduling algorithms um, so as usual we'll always be looking for the shortest uh, burst time as usual but we preempt a process when we come across a shorter uh, shorter uh, what you call process while we are uh, executing the current process yeah that sounds really uh, confusing but it will get easier once you watch the tutorial all right so we have all these processes here and now well this looks like a really big table well I'm starting out with the hard example because if you understand the hard example trust me you can solve any problem that you come across for non preemptive scheduling because it's it covers every sort of uh, problems that you might come across when you first uh, do the tracing of the algorithm so first off we have the uh, as you can notice there are no arrival time that starts with zero the first process that comes is at the second second I mean <laughs> in the two seconds at two seconds arrival time the the process start coming and from then on the process start coming as four three four five eight so within that time from zero to two second the CPU stays idle it does not do any sort of work at this time it starts working from the process uh, from from the second uh, from from two seconds it starts actu it starts its actual work so as you can see in the two second in two seconds uh, two processes arrive at the same time p3 and p5 so we select p p3 because uh, what you call the burst time of it is uh, uh, it's it's lesser than p5 so when you have two processes that have the same arrival time you you count the burst time you take the burst time into account and when you have uh, the same process which have the same burst time then you take the arrival time into account so yeah we take uh, since it's shortest job first we take the shortest burst time first so p3 so we start executing let's start executing it like slowly we're not gonna just write 2 plus 7 as uh, 9 we don't gonna write 9 here we just execute it slowly just slowly till 3 seconds it's executing the CPU is executing p3 now within 3 seconds another process comes which is uh, p7 now p7 is uh, like shorter like the the burst time is uh, lesser than p3 p3 you have already executed one second so p3 has this is the remaining time para we just gonna write the remaining times here because we can, while we are executing one process we can preempt it and do another process which is shorter than it in the meantime so since uh, we have executed one unit of uh, one second of p3 so we, uh, the remaining time is six second and for this the remaining the, the time is five now since five is lesser than six we execute p7 so p7 we always the main criteria is we're always looking for the shortest job first the shortest burst time first so p7 is shorter so we execute p7 but also we're executing it slowly so let's execute it till four seconds okay like till just let's just execute one unit of it now within four seconds another process comes which is like the burst time is three it's p4 well this is shorter let's write the remaining time first so we have six uh, p3 p4 and p7 in our arsenal within this four seconds uh, and also p5 but p5 is too big so we're not taking that into account uh, within four seconds the process that have arrived in the cpu are p3 p4 p5 and p7 all right oh and oh and p6 so we have five processes now within this four two eight three six all of the uh, within these five processes the shortest one is p6 so now we take uh, we start executing p6 first p6 All right so p6 we again executed let's let's execute uh, one unit again just do it slowly it's fine if you if you're writing it twice now the remaining time is one and four one eight three six and uh, five second uh, we have executed five second and another process has arrived which is p2 and uh, the first time of it is one but since we're executing p6 and the remaining time for p6 is just one second so let's just execute it and finish it i mean uh, we can do this but then it's better if we just take this because p6 we're already executing 
and we don't we are comparing p6 with p2 because p2 is smaller we're supposed to take p2 but then we should be taking p6 because it's already it has one second left and since we're already executing it in the cpu instead of switching to another process and uh, you know like you know that context switching when you're switching to another process that's like a context switching has overhead like it's uh, it uh, at that time when 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 a process when when the cpu switches from one process to another there is a little bit of time lost within the, the at that time the other process stays idle and stuff so the context switching time is purely overhead so instead of switching to another process let's just execute the one we have and since the time is the same i mean it's still short the short the, it's still the shorter job than all the others we're just gonna execute p6 and finish it uh, fully so we execute it till six so four to six all right so p6 is done so it will be zero p6 is totally done we don't need to execute it anymore now till six second we have all these processes okay p2 p3 p4 p5 and p7 p6 is done so let's just execute the shortest job first which is p2 now so p2 and it's just seven seconds all right so p2 is done fully P2 is now out of the way. P6 is also out of the way. Now we count P7, P5, P4, P3, and P1 didn't arrive yet because it's arrived, it arrives at 8 second. All right, so uh, yeah. So now we're gonna take uh, the shortest job first, which is 4, 8, 3, uh, among, among 6, 3, 8, and 4. So now we're gonna take P4 because P4 is the shortest job at the moment okay so p4 we execute it till 8 seconds p4 and the remaining time is 2 now within 8 seconds p1 has arrived in the cpu and p1 is shorter than p4 because the short burst time for p4 is 2 burst time for p1 is 1 so we are going to execute p1 this time so 9 all right so p1 is done this is the remaining time is zero. P1 is fully done. Now the shortest job is among six, two, eight, and four. The shortest job is P4 again, so we select P4. Now we complete it fully. We're not gonna do one unit unit and check again because we know that six is of course bigger and four is obviously bigger, eight is definitely bigger. So let's just finish it fully. So nine, ten, eleven. Right? So the remaining time for this is zero now. Okay, so now the, the, the jobs that are remaining are four, four second, eight second, and six second. So P3, uh, P4 is done. So P3, P5, and P7 are left. So now we execute P7. Because P7 is shorter. It's just four second, is eight second, is six second. So we, we are going to be executing it fully because obviously four second is... Uh, shorter is uh, the the burst time of p7 is shorter than all of it and uh, we don't need to switch switch to another process in the meantime so obviously it's going to be 15 we're going to execute it fully and within that time also no, no other processes are arriving so we don't need to be like careful say, okay we just execute one unit let's see if another shorter process arrives no nothing's arriving we have already all the processes in our arsenal at the moment so we're just going to be executing the processes fully as it is uh, the shortest job of course first and then after that uh, p7 is done so we have p3 and p5 left p3 is 6 second and p5 is 8 second let's execute it fully so p3 is 15 plus 6 is 21 and then p5 is 21 plus 8 is 29 now these kind of maths you have to check the answer right like if your answer is correct or not and since there's also an idle time you might be like okay maybe I'm just kind of confused about my answer what you would do is first find the sum of the burst time all right the sum of the first time is burst time is 7 8 9 9 plus 3 is 12 12 13 14 14 plus 5 is 19 19 plus 8 is 27 all right so the sum of the burst time is the sum bt equals to 27 all right and now what you have got is tw 0 to 29 well your answer is still correct because the uh, cpu was, was idle for the first two seconds so you don't need to take into account the two seconds uh, the the idle time of the cpu so you just uh, like the total time for this will be 29 
minus 2, which is 27. So yeah, your answer is correct. The answer for uh, the, like you're supposed to get the total burst time here. In this gun chart, in every gun chart actually, not just this gun chart, in every gun chart, the way you can check your answer is if the sum of the burst time uh, is equal to the t times you're getting in the gun chart in this axis, in this x axis or whatever. Alright, so yeah, that's about it for non preemptive, uh, sorry, the preemptive scheduling algorithm. What we basically do is uh, we just preempt the process while, when we preempt the current process if we get a smaller process within that arrival time. And we have to find the waiting time, of course. Let's start finding the waiting time. Alright, so for P3, okay, so this waiting time is going to be tough to find out because as you can see, P3 has appeared here once. It has appeared here once, right? So we have to take into account all the waiting times then. So for P, P, let's start with P1 first, okay? Let's just go sequentially. Okay, so P1's arrival time is 8 uh, and its visiting time is 8. So 8 minus 8 is 0. And since it has just appeared once, P1 has just appeared once. So we don't need to take into, we don't need to find the other P1s here. It's just appeared once here, so it will be 0. Let's go with P2. P2 has appeared, uh, P2 has appeared also once. So this is done. Uh, P P one. Let's just color code it so that it's easier for us to understand. All right. So P two has also appeared once, and the burst time, uh, the visiting time of P two is six. Remember, the first thing is visiting time. The second thing is uh, uh, the finishing time. So it's always visiting time minus arrival time. So P 2s visiting time is six, and its arrival time is five. So six minus five is one. All right. And now for P three, let's go with P three. P3 has appeared 1, 2, and yeah, that's it. P3 has appeared just, sorry, not this. Ugh. Can't even understand my own handwriting. Alright, so P3 has appeared once here and once here. Alright, so uh, let's see. The arrival, the visiting time for this is 2, so 2 minus 2 is 0. So that's fine. The, the waiting time for the first P1, P3 is fine. Now, what we do is, the second time that P3 has arrived, we just subtract the visiting time uh, of the, uh, we just subtract the finishing time of the first, uh, the first occurrence of P3 minus the visiting time of the second uh, or the next occurrence of P3. Alright, that happens with all the cases, okay? See, the, you've seen that one, once the process has appeared here, it has also appeared here. Like P7 has also appeared here once and here once. Same rule goes for all the processes, whichever has appeared once or, or more than once. All right. So first we get two visiting my visiting time minus arrival time, which is two minus two, and then we get visiting time minus finishing time. All right. So visiting time minus finishing time is fifteen minus three zero plus fifteen minus three, so which is twelve. Right, so now let's color code the next one. Okay, P3 is done. P4, let's go for P4. So we have P4 here, here, and that's it. P4 has appeared just twice. Right, so visiting time minus arrival time. So four, uh, 7 minus 4 is 3. 3 plus we have the finishing time here and the visiting time here. Visiting time here uh, and finishing time here. The second occurrence, the second occurrence is visiting time minus the first occurrence is finishing time. So eight, nine minus eight, which is one. So we get four. All right, P four is done. Now let's go for P five. So let's select yeah it's this color. Okay, for P five, um, P five has appeared just once here. Uh, and nowhere else, right? So P5, the arrival time, uh, the visiting time is 21 and the arrival time is 2. So 21 minus 2. 21 minus 2. So it's 19. Alright? 19. Okay? And now for P6. P6 has also appeared uh, just once. P6 we, uh, twice here, but then they're appearing at the same, like, you can just write this as P6 fully for this whole box because it didn't context switch. I mean, these all these processes, they switched. I mean, uh, they, P3, then it executed P7. It switched from one process to another, but this one, they didn't switch. They were just executing the same process. So we just take into account this time here. So 4 visiting time 
minus arrival time which is <clears throat> 4 minus 4 is 0 so the waiting time is 0 for P7 it appeared let's change the color first uh, P7 has appeared here once and here once right so P7 3 minus 3 is 0 so 0 plus this finishing time and this arrival time so 11 minus 4 we get 7 so the waiting time is 7 All right so this, these are the answers for the waiting time 0 1 12 4 19 and 7 so yeah that's about it for today's tutorial and I hope you understood everything this is the hardest problem that you can ever get for non preemptive well, um, hardest as in, of course, computers can calculate more bigger numbers. We're just doing it with smaller numbers. And this is the hardest uh, problem you can get in an exam because it covers everything. It covers the idle time thingy, the idle time calculation, what, what you would do when a process arrives, uh, like not at zero second, it arrives at later than zero second. Then you just, you just execute this, you just uh, indicate this as the idle time. And then you start continuing the gun chart from there on. And then you have the uh, examples of how to find the waiting time because when there's a process appearing twice, like P3 has appeared twice or twice or thrice or any, like more than once, when it ha whenever it has appeared more than once, you apply that rule. Like you just, you know, uh, first you just, first you do the same that you always do, like the visiting time minus arrival time. And then for the next process that, that comes, that occurs, you just subtract the visiting time, uh, the finishing time of the current, the, the first process or the current process from the uh, visit the finishing time of the current process from the arrive uh, the visiting time of the next process all right so yeah thank you for watching and please subscribe and like if you want uh, please subscribe and give a thumbs up if you want more tutorials and good luck